Today's message is entitled, God Specializes in Chaotic Situations. All of us have some type of chaos going on in our lives. Chaotic situations that we've been involved in, chaotic situations in our past, in our current, and even some of us will enter into chaotic situations in our futures. But before we do, or where we are in the stages of those chaotic situations, I want to make you well aware by the Spirit of the Lord that God specializes in chaotic situations. So when we look at the term chaos or chaos, uh, we are looking at the meaning that's in our adjective. It means completely confused or disordered, disorganized, tumultuous, turbulent, uh, riotous, or uncontrolled. These are things that are under all of those wordings that we have absolutely 100% no c control over. Things that are so out of whack in our lives that even when we attempt to get control of it, we absolutely cannot do so. We see that even in court equate and attribute a lot of different characteristics towards God. And one of his major specialties is him handling chaotic circumstances or situations that impact our lives. He never backs away from the challenges. As a matter of fact, he meets them head on. And even if we look at Genesis 1 and 1 through Genesis 1 and 2, we see God dealing with a major chaotic situation where the Bible says the earth was formless and void and darkness hovered over the face of the deep. But we see that during six days, God took that chaotic situation and recreated everything, creating all the animals, the herbs of the, of the ground, the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, man himself. And on the Sabbath day, the Bible says that God rested after he created everything. And he said that everything that he created was good. Listen, there is something good that God is looking to bring out of your chaotic situation. In every single life, to paraphrase what people say, have been saying for years, into every life, some rain must fall. And also, a good farmer who harvests crops knows that if he really wants to get the best out of his crop, he must dung it or fertilize it or use manure to actually get something good from the ground that is nutritious for human consumption. Now that's part of the circle of life. Everything that you go through in life is a part of your spiritual life in the Lord. For your growth, for your development, for your knowledge, and by the scriptures say that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb in the words of our testimony. We talked about it last week that many who choose to live godly will suffer persecution. We also know that those who choose to live godly will go through many trials and tribulations and through many difficulties. But yet we know that the Lord is on our side. So when we look at Genesis 1, 1 to 2, it says, in the, beginning was God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Listen, God is moving. If you're going through chaotic situations today, that is a grand opportunity for the Spirit of the Lord to hover over the face of of your waters, over your tears, over your life, over your flow, and bring everything back into order. Just because you can't see God in this moment and in this hour working on your behalf does not mean that he isn't involved in it. He is hovering over you, waiting for the opportune moment in time and say, let there be light. And in the moment, 
And in the hour that he begins to hover, change is enacted. Whether we can feel the change or not, we must endure the six-day process to get to our Sabbath rest in the Lord, where chaos is turned from chaos, and God says, it is is good. And many of us, our preference would be to move immediately to it is good as opposed to waiting for God to work through the process. The process is, is just as important as God hovering, as God speaking, as God correcting and God getting you to your Sabbath day. Many of us in the body of Christ lack character because we don't want to endure. We must endure our trials of affliction. We must endure it patiently, long-suffering, and waiting on the Lord. The scriptures say, wait on the Lord and be of good carriage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Even when we look at people throughout the scripture who really wanted the Lord to move immediately. We can talk about the demonic son in Matthew 17th chapter. Uh, where the father went to his disciples and the, his disciples couldn't do anything about it. So he goes on to say in verse 15 of that same chapter, Lord have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. A chaotic situation. Father has a reasonable request. Deliver my son. He takes him to those who walked, walk with Jesus. And they couldn't do anything about it. How many of us who walk with the Lord, that God wants us to be life changers. But when people come to us in chaotic situations, we lack the power to bring change. God's desire is for you to be a circumstance changer. He has not only anointed you, he has equipped you, empowered you, endued you, influenced you, cultivated you to be a life changer. Let me say that again. He has anointed you to change situations in people's lives. God has anointed you to turn the chaos around. As a devil chaser, as a Bible believer, as a believer in Jesus Christ, he has come into your life, not only just to change you, but to cause you to be a chaos chaser and to change situations. So when he came, he said to his disciples, then Jesus answered, said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. This is a type of mentality that Jesus is looking for. People that are full of faith and power and will say and not run from chaotic situations. When you're going through your personal chaotic situations, it is a learning testing ground for you to find out what's truly on the inside of you. To prove to you that God is giving you the power by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost if we would tap 
into the power of the risen Savior, we will be able to tap into the perfected power of the Lord. And when we tap into the perfected power of the Lord, things must change. So they brought the boy to Jesus. And we go on to see in the next few verses, it says, and Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that hour. Then Jesus, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. How often do we as disciples of Jesus Christ function in unbelief? You may not want to answer that, but I will, because I can personally answer that. There are a lot of times that I move in unbelief. Someone has given, gave me a prophetic word on last year. And I just came into the realization of that prophetic word being fulfilled on this past week, starting last Sunday and finalizing itself on Thursday evening and concretely finalizing on yesterday. When we move in unbelief, we delay the process or we void out the process altogether. But when we move in faith, things change. And it's often when we're not thinking about the situation or we become completely at the end of our rope. And now we're forced to function, to operate, and to move in faith faith. Lord, I believe you. Help thou my unbelief. The father said with tears to Jesus, Lord, help thou my unbelief. In order for chaos to be removed, our faith has to increase. Our faith has to be strengthened. Our faith has to be concrete. And our faith has to be in Jesus Christ. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of the Lord. Open up your spirit wide. Open up your spirit wide and accept and embrace faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Pastor, you've been redundant lately, but redundancy reinforces learning. Faith is such a powerful tool that the devil knows it to the very point and extent that he fights us with unbelief. And we would rather believe when we walk in unbelief. We walk in praise and worship to demonic forces. When we walk in faith, we walk in, we walk in angelic and Jesus's power being influenced by the Holy Spirit of God. Faith is the very thing that pleases God and causes action on his part into our lives which defeats all chaotic situations, all demonic forces that heals, brings deliverance, brings peace, brings sanity, brings joy, brings devotion, brings pure praise and worship unto our God. Faith is the changer. And when the man cried out, Lord, help 
thou my unbelief. He opened up the door for things to change. But notice when the boy was delivered, the disciples of Jesus came to him and said, Lord, why could not we cast that spirit out? Faith is increased by spiritual activity. Jesus said that these things come of not out, but by fasting and by prayer. Some of you are going through chaotic situations right now, but you have not employed spiritual means. We see in Genesis 1, 1, and, 1, 1 and 1 and 2, where the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the water. And it was the Spirit of the Lord that brought change. If you want spiritual resolve and God to move, you must fast, you must pray, you must turn down your plate, increase your faith, and the intensity of your prayer life. And you must remain focused, not allowing anything or anyone to enter in to your space of faith. Let me say that again. Your faith has got to be so strong that nothing can destroy it. Your faith must be so strong that nothing can destroy it. Lucifer knows that if I can damage your faith, I got you good. And the Lord does not want you to fail. Your chaotic situation is about to see sunlight, see order, see correction, see fruitfulness when it is overturned and sunk into the water of the spirit of your devotion and your prayer and your faith before God. This is a ship, the ship of chaos that God wants to sink and send to the bottom and send your praise through the surface and your voice to be heard on high. You are a threat to chaos. If only you would open up your eyes and see that God has given you the power over chaos because he says this, he has given us the spirit of power of love and a sound mind. A sound mind rejects chaos. A sound mind is a force to be reckoned with in chaotic situations. Why? Because thou will keep in perfect peace all who minds are stayed upon him. Chaos can't do nothing with a person that is at peace. When you're at peace in the midst of chaos, you're like a, a beaconing light shining so ever brilliantly that all that see, even there in the midst of the chaos, and their minds are so consumed by the chaotic situations, and they see the peacefulness of God, and you're in that chaotic situation. But all around you are the rays of hope, love, peace, and a sound thought process. 
that came from God. And God in that situation is feeding you with information telling you how to overturn chaotic situations. And I'm thinking back on many times in my life how God delivered me from chaotic situations, delivered me out of them, or changed the hearts of individuals. And right now, by the Spirit of God, I rebuke every chaotic situation that is in your life right here and the right now and I'm even speaking of some of those things in my own personal life but God rebuke hallelujah Jesus in the spirit what I saw when I said that was a force of God going out and pushing back every chaotic devil so you got to see this thing in the spirit, speaking those things that aren't as though they are. And I believe that that is. And that has happened. See, we look for the grand things, but by faith, accept and believe that God is pushing back every chaotic situation from you by the word of the Lord. Don't get caught up in theatrics. Get caught up in the power of God's word. Whether it's forcefully spoken or softly spoken, the power is in what God reveals by his spirit and not by our antics. So God is trying to get us out of the performance industry and get us into the ministry where we're serving the people of God with the word of the Lord. And that word becomes so powerful that it brings action because it connects with faith and belief and with the situation that demands change. When we approach the word of God in that methodology and in those terms, then we free the spirit of the Lord to function and to operate in us. Too many times we restrict the spirit of the Lord by what we say and by what we do that God isn't in. But when we perform and operate solely by faith on what God has shown us, revealed to us, and spoken to us, and shown us in his word, then, and only then, will we get the results of God. Chaos is destroyed by the word of God and our faith. Simplistically today, the word of the Lord. Go believing and let the spirit of the Lord push back, change, and overturn and sink every chaotic situation in your life. I want you to know by the spirit of the Lord he has granted you that power. Now walk in it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.